translators not set the heads of the table. The three microphones you see are on the table are monitored and recorded 24 hours a day. These microphones also stand as the military demarcation line in this building. So those of you on my left are not standing in Communist North Korea. And those on my right are still relatively safe with me in the Republic of Korea. Uh, the guard posts inside this building are here for your protection. They are real. I know they're statues. Um, <laughs> uh, they're standing in a monitor. historical background of DMC. <laughs> Why Korean divided, first of all? Okay, you see? We have tension. North Korea has sent spies underwater. Okay. So these are the block, the infiltration of spies. So you see the continuation of the wire fence and guard posters until uh, the DMZ over there.
publications are becoming ever more aggressive and intricate. The attack on naval ship Cha and bombing of Yun in 2010 was more than provocation. It was a declaration of war. There is the DMZ. Land of life. Paradise of migratory birds. And for everlasting peace. The DMZ lives on. The DMZ is a paradise for moose, goats, and wild flowers. Chinese geese to eagles, and rare birds such as white cranes, herons, and black-faced spoonbills. The DMZ is a land of life, where wild animals live in harmony. The Miracles of the DMZ is now changing once again and spreading its popularity in the world. Developed into a tourist destination, the areas around the DMZ will heighten our security awareness and offer tremendous opportunities for people to coexist with nature. Beyond preservation of the ecosystem, and tourism for emphasizing the importance of national security. The DMZ is becoming a symbolic space for the era of unification. Our painful history is buried in the DMZ and tunnels, but this is just another meeting for the hope and desire of reunification. We should learn the lesson that our painful history must not be repeated. and achieve miraculous economic growth. And another miracle that we must achieve as we pursue harmony and coexistence, unification. Until that day comes, the DMZ will be alive forever.
sign we are now approaching right here is a marks the official entry to the southern boundary of the demilitarized zone so now you're officially in the DMZ These fields you see to your left and your right are farmed by the villagers of Taesong Dong or Freedom Village. The village is not actually under the administrative control of the Republic of Korea's government. Therefore, they pay no federal taxes, the government subsidizes the building of all their homes, and the men are exempt from military service. To be a resident of this unique village, one has to be a resident of the Panmun Valley prior to the Korean War or direct descendant of resident. Females may marry into the village, however, males, males may not due to military draft regulations. Um, so there are currently 201 residents inside this village. They must stay there 249 to maintain residency. They do get paid 82,000 US dollars tax free a year. So most of them are pretty rich. So this one's always hard to point out, but on top of the hill to your left front is uh, Guard Post 240. Guard Post 240 is manned by the soldiers, uh, soldiers of the 1st Rock Infantry Division. And on a clear day, they can see approximately 17 kilometer, kilometers into North Korea. Soldiers there look for a large buildup of military personnel and equipment that may precede an attack on the south. This is formerly known as OP Collier and manned by the soldiers of the 2nd United States Infantry Division. However, on October 1st, 1991, the control of this guard post was handed over to the 1st Rock Infantry Division and renamed Guard Post 240. And 1,800 meters to your right on top of the hill, you can see another guard post. This is Observation Post Oyele or OPO. Observation Post Oyele is manned by the soldiers of this unit. It's the most strategically placed observation post in the Korean Peninsula. 
was located 25 meters from the uh, MDL. Soldiers there had the same guard mission as Guard Post 240. However, on a clear day, they could see approximately 27 kilometers into North Korea. And if the U.S. president ever wants to come, he can come uh, come uh, to OPL, but he cannot go up to the Joint Security Area where you're allowed to, unless he, he says he wants to, so we can't stop him. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the JSA checkpoint to the village of Taesong Dong, the Freedom Village. And on your right, you're going to see a monument dedicated to four soldiers who were killed in 1968 when North Korean soldiers infiltrated south of the MDL and ambushed a truck delivering food to the soldiers of the security battalion. As you pass this next tree line to your left, you will get your first look into Commons, North Korea at Jijondonga Propaganda Village. Time to see it. Is that the flag? Or the flag? Do you see it? Yeah. You also see the flagpole at Taesongdong. Right there. <laughs> we'll get a better view of Jijun Dong right here. This is true line passes. So we know most of these buildings are actually fake. They have painted on doors and windows. And the extremely large North Korean flag weighs about 600 pounds dry weight. So during inclement weather, it needs to be taken down or it will rip upon its own weight. And the checkpoint we are now approaching is United Nations Command Checkpoint Charlie. The checkpoint is manned 24-7 and regulates all traffic in and out of the Joint Security Area. As you pass the checkpoint, if you look to your right, you can see the road leading to the Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission Camp. There are currently five Swiss delegates and five Swedish delegates there. They are both headed by two-star generals. The large gray building to your left right here is the Republic of Korea's Peace House. It was built in December 1989 to house talks between North and South Korea and are not armistice related. And also the area to your left right here, uh, it needs to be cut. But, um, <laughs> um, this was once the location of UNC Sunken Garden, the focal point of the 1984 Soviet defector firefight in which Corporal Jang was killed. Uh, during the construction of the new Freedom House, this, the decision was made to place the second garden with a unification monument. So it's supposed to signify, signify two hands holding. I don't see, I see macaroni noodles or something. <laughs> um, the JDO likes to say Lego hands. Um, that's a little joke we have here. So. pictures um, so once this tour leaves um, we can go to the Freedom House if anybody has questions feel free to ask